So you want to be able to import and link access data into Excel. So you can see in this relational database, I've got various tables. I want to import the transactions table, which is linked to the other tables in my database. So when I make the import, it's also going to bring through related fields in these other tables. Okay, let's go straight to Excel. So to perform the import, you're going to go to the data tab on your ribbon, then to get data from database from Microsoft Access Database. Then you need to browse for the database that you want to import and link to, and then select it and click on the import button. So that'll list all the tables in your database. We only want to select one table, but if you wanted to select more than one, then just tick that little box up there and then tick whatever tables you want to import. So I've selected the transactions table, and then I go down to transform data. And you just need to go through the field properties up here just to make sure they're correct. So for example, this transaction ID field doesn't need to use decimal places. So I'm just gonna say it's a whole number field. Date doesn't need to show the time. Sales rep is whole number. Customer experience rating is whole number. Product ID, that can remain as text. Quantity, again, whole number. Payment type is text. So then we get over to these foreign key fields. So for example, D employee, if I go back to access, there is no field called D employee in the transactions table. It's picking up that field name from the table that this foreign key is linked to. So D employee is the name of this table that the transactions table is linked to. So the great thing about this is that I can expand this field and now I have access to all the fields in the employee table. So I can, for example, choose which fields I want to import along with the transaction data. So I want the name of the employee, just that one field. Now, I would recommend that you always untick this option, use original column name as prefix. Otherwise, you end up with a very messy field name. So I'm going to untick this, click on OK, and now we have the name of the employee. I'm going to do the same for products. This will link to the products table. I'll just show you that in the database. So I've got product ID there linking to the D products table. So I'm going to have access to all these fields. So click here and I want to show brand and the description. I've got this tick box unticked. So I now have brand and description pulled through into this table. Now F returns. Now for the moment, what I'm going to do is actually delete this. I'm going to remove it. And now I'm ready for the import. So to import it into Excel, very simple. Go up to the home tab and then click on this close and load button. And you'll notice it brings it through quite quickly. And you also have this queries and connection task pane that appears here and tells you the number of records that it's imported, 24,000. Now to prove it's linked to the Access database, what I'm going to do is go back to Access and add a record to the transactions table. So you can see I already have one record here that relates to today's date today's date being the 18th of July. I'm going to add another record, also today's date. Sales Rep 2, CER 5, customer experience rating that is. Product ID, quantity, let's say three. And so it was voucher payment. Now it's important that you do come out of this record, otherwise it doesn't save it. So at the moment, this record is not saved, but if I just click out of that record, it will automatically save it in Access. Then let's go back to Excel and see if it's imported it. So just to prove that currently I only have one record with today's date on, you can see it's only got one record there at the top. But if I refresh this table, it should bring through that other record. So you need to be in the table to do this. Table Design tab, click Refresh. And there we are, it's brought through that additional record with today's date on it. 
Now, if you decide for whatever reason that you want to make changes to this import, it's really easy to achieve. So we're going to import the returned column, which previously we deleted from the query. So you need to see the queries and connections pane on your screen. And if you can't see that, just go to data. You've got this toggle button here, queries and connections. So if I close that down, I can click on queries and connections and it'll open it back up. So what I'm going to do is double click here on my query. And down the side here, you can see all the steps that you've applied to your query. So the last step we applied deleted that return column. So I'm going to delete that step, which will reinstate that returns column. So then what I can do is expand it and select which columns I want to display. So I say returned, click on OK, and then close and load. You can see that it has now bought in the returned column. Now I've made a mess of that column name. So all I need to do is go back in here and add an additional step, which would be basically to rename this column. Close and load. And it makes the change in Excel. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next video.